Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. I had to think about that for a second. You, yeah, it's Rare Whiskey Friday. Yes, uh, Rare Whiskey Friday. We're gonna go through and get first impressions on several different whiskeys. These aren't necessarily large brands. Sometimes they are. More often than not, these are gonna be your smaller craft distilleries without a lot of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place to get your hands on these whiskeys, you are welcome for the review. And thank you to the magnificent bastards who sent the whiskey. Yes, this is a donation from William Shappert. There's two of them today that are William Shappert, Titan of Whiskey. Daniel, in the distance, do you hear that? Oh, I do. It could have been. It's probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cheers, you magnificent bastards. I feel like we need to call family members sometimes, like family members right. of people who have sent this amount of whiskey to us <laughs> and ask if they know, like if we need to stage an intervention. Like, Do your kids have a college fund? Yeah. Because <laughs> I may have it. Yeah, <laughs> I may have it. <laughs> uh, first, the color on this thing. I know, right? Wow. Hold up so, this uh, paper so people can see. That is super dark. Whiskey. Yeah, even in the glass. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. So this is this is a funny sentence that was on their website that I want you to hear. Center Fire Distillery Corn Whiskey. Yeah. This is how it starts. Center Fire Distillery <laughs> was founded in 2019. I'm gonna skip ahead. Yeah. Our corn whiskey won a gold medal in 2017. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so, and it's because they opened up in 2019 in Boise, Idaho, after acquiring the equipment and product of a distillery going out of business. Okay. And so they were already releasing whiskey that had been distilled before because yeah. they bought out another distillery. Right. Well, this whiskey evidently won awards. So wait, the whiskey of the distillery that went under mm -hmm. is this. That's got to be like a kick in the nuts. If you're I know, right? Distillery. Like, we're going out of business. We'll take it. And we submit it. We won awards. Like, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, white oak, corn, 15-gallon uh, barrels, and some kind of proprietary process, they say, that makes it smooth. Probably some version of stripping things, mm -hmm. as in filtering or something. <laughs> but it's, it's proprietary. <laughs> yeah. I have an interesting relationship with the word proprietary. Having, been, having worked with a lot of people and their intellectual property and mm -hmm. producing content for their businesses. Right, and, having to sign NDAs all the time. Well, I never would. Right. Yeah, they, you know, they're paying me money, they want to do this project. And it becomes very clear very quickly, I'm not signing your NDA for what you think is proprietary technology. Yeah. Because I fucking promise you, what you think is unique and special and brilliant, I've heard 15 times before. Oh yeah. This, I'm not signing anything. Yeah. And it's never been a problem. Yeah. Uh, especially with like younger people, whenever they're just getting started out. They think they're supposed to do that. Yeah. There's an NDA. Right. It's like, why? I like these like 20, 20 something year olds guy, they sit down at the coffee shop, they pass around the NDAs, they feel like they're doing real stuff. It's like, guys, guys no. you don't need these. <laughs> this is why I always say contracts. Like I don't ever require contracts for things I'm doing. Right. Because it's like, if you don't like me, fire me. Right. Like, there, there is a place and time for NDAs, but 90, 95% of the time, it's just people trying to, you know, posture and pose. And yeah, this is like when I used to teach on independent music and there's always, every time, right. every time, somebody in the room raised their hand and said, how do I keep people from stealing my songs? <laughs> it's like, you, you, sh you pretentious asshole <laughs> that you think anyone in the world wants your songs. I guarantee you the person who asked that question, right. your songs are shit. <laughs> right, because yeah. Uh, all right, it's anyway. a whiskey channel allegedly. Here we go. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, the density on this, this is corn whiskey. Well, yeah, it is corn whiskey. This is concentrated. Whoa. This is almost like whiskey extract. It really is. Ooh, it's just really crunchy. Uh, squeezed so woody. in there. Squeezed but in there. But corn whiskey is supposed to be used or un charred barrels. You know what, this is that level of density that you'll find in several Texas whiskeys. Once they're cooking in that heat and they leave the proof up there, what's crazy about this, Daniel, did you look at the proof? Uh, it's proprietary. It, no, the proof is not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's 80 proof, it, I think, Yeah, right? it's 40% ABV. <laughs> yeah. That much, Jesus. I think this is probably the most density coming out of a 40% whiskey I've ever had. Yeah, that's just, 
And corn. How is a corn uncharred or, un, or used oak yeah. getting that? This is... How old is this? This is like a oaky, woody, almost like a burnt molasses, thick... Whoa! Oh, it tastes like wood varnish mixed with candy corn. How is that corn whiskey on oh, any planet? Hold on a second. Like, Balcones has corn with baby blue and true blue, right? Right. right. How is... What there's, the hell's going on here? That, that woody varnishy note? Yeah. That, there's almost like a buttery caramel on top of it. I'm gonna, yeah. put it, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I kind of really like it's it. It's so weird. I kind of really like it. Yeah, but the weirdness... What's going on? It's... It's flavors that I don't think I've ever experienced at this low of a proof. So I get that, you know, mur burnt molasses and really rich wood and thick, syrupy, dark, heavy notes. Um, but there's zero alcohol punch that carry those notes. Right. It's just, hey, here's that flavor that you always have associated with really high right. proofs, but it's not a high proof at all. It's the floor. By the way, I read their website a little bit closer. I think we got it backwards. I think the people who they bought it from did win the award before they sold it. Right. So just in case. But this is weird mm -hmm. And I'm not a fan at all. I think but I, like it. I think I like it. It's so weird. <laughs> I wonder if they're doing some sort of like hyper chunks of wood no, in the barrel. No, that's I'm saying. Yeah, they're they're putting charred bits of something but, uh, inside the 15 gallon barrel. Our guess would be. Our yeah. guess would be that they're shoving and they're, you know, pulling more woody Or they're out. doing extreme temperature changes to like force in and out of the wood barrels. Uh, but, oh, you know what it is? Hmm. Daniel, you know what it is? That, that um, caramelized, almost charred vanilla note, mm -hmm. whenever we cooked a vodka in a five gallon barrel. Oh, yeah. Really small barrels, and we just put a neutral spirit in there, the vodka, and then it, the color got super dark, and there was this like really surprisingly rich, dense, dense oaky vanilla note it carried with it. There's some common threads there, some overlap there. Yeah. You are not a fan of nope. Funky Adventure. I I like how weird it is. I would probably reach for it a few different times. The proprietary things, like, hey, I don't nah. But I like how I like the weirdness. This is a gift from magnificent bastard Tan Ha. Tan Ha, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> He said, hey, this is my first sacrificial bottle. Yeah. Uh, this is Kentucky bourbon, probably sourced from Heaven Hill. How are they not sued? I know, probably sourced from Heaven Hill. Probably gonna get sued. Yeah, 101, right? The Jack Daniels people are very protective of this whole scene. Yeah, they are. Scene. Charcoal filtered <laughs> and rare, 101 proof. Yeah. This is all kinds of bullshit bottle labeling here. Uh, and well, it's $15. I'm sure, look, bullshit in terms of none of those Terms mean it. Yeah, like rare 101 proof. Um, just like well, the wild proof turkey. has to mean something. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like rare, rare proof. It's not, anyway. I don't know. So uh, on the nose, though, on the nose. It's just going to be Heaven Hill at 101. It's is my of, guess. It's like, it's like Heaven Hill. It's really good Kentucky bourbon smelling. It's like Heaven Hill at 101. Yeah. Virgin bourbon? Why is it virgin bourbon? This rare bottle has been bottled at 100. Oh, that's nice. Rich, For 15 robust bucks? And hearty. It's a, it's Americans fight. So where does the virgin come from? I don't know. Tan. Tan. It's What's with the virgins? Fifteen bucks. Take a taste. Fifteen bucks. It's pretty good. Fifteen bucks. It's pretty good for Wait, fifteen bucks. Wait, that's proof for fifteen yeah, bucks. Yeah, for fifteen bucks. Wait a minute. What yeah. are we doing? How fifteen bucks? What are we doing? He's like, oh, you want to get out the wild turkey one on one and see how it compares, even though it's Red Whiskey Friday? Yes. Yes. Oh. Uh oh. I'm big old spicy, honey. We might be out of wild turkey one on one over here. I may have it in my office. You bastard. All right. Never mind. Yeah. No comparison for you. I'll just compare in my office. <laughs> okay. Um, it's pretty good though, right? So yeah. I actually like it. It, it. it is classic flavors. Those flavors get a little bit of a spicy, spicy honey. Oh, cinnamon. Smoky honey. Yeah. A cinnamon just exploded out of that sip that I just took. Uh, but for that price point, Right, we were we were hemming and hawing and kind of ball busting no, a little bit. No, what are you doing? Yeah, it's you got a nice, yeah. Yeah, nice little whiskey. That and part, we're doing some yeah. money. Nice proof, nice flavors. What, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> mumble, 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 mumble. All right, let's move on to William Shepard's second thing, which is this is trippy. It's Noble Oak. Yeah. So here's the weird thing about this. This is a whiskey company who is 
90% of their website is talking about saving the environment and planting trees. But then they also do whiskey. Yeah, they're just, basically, these people have a mission to contribute trees and reforestation, all this stuff, to yeah. the planet. And they're using whiskey. Basically, think of it like this way. You've got people who make kick-ass shoes, and you've yeah. got Toms. They joined Mr. Beast Team Trees and started yeah. a distillery. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, you got Toms. Yeah. Is Toms a shoemaker? Yeah, but what is he really doing? Well, he's selling shoes to sure. fund blah, blah, blah. It seems like that, sure. right? It's using whiskey to fund a cause. Okay. Um, this one's called Noble Oak, and it's Edgerton Group which also um, is invested in Wyoming, oh, among Wyoming. others. There's okay. there a lot of investment from Edgerton Group in things, including this. So, they use a proprietary process. <laughs> no joke, they really do. Um, <laughs> like, another one. Look, can I just, for a quick moment. Yeah. Proprietary processes. Uh, proprietary just means it's like unique, unique and special in ours. Mm -hmm. But you can, like any other phrase, it's rare, it's small batch. You can take that to such a level that any <laughs> whiskey maker making anything anywhere can say proprietary. Oh, yeah. Because it just needs the smallest, most granular, minute, insignificant of a difference. Yeah, we do it on like, this address right. on the Google Maps. Right, and instead of ours still being oriented east-west, it's oriented 90 degrees off axis than that yeah. other guy's exact same. Yeah. So it, it's... Yeah, it's one of the things it doesn't really mean anything. So they use oak, but they also use sherry oak staves inserted into things. Okay. So it's a sherry oak stave bourbon. I got it. I like the nose. Oh, hold on. What? Did That's, you not silence your no, phone? No, it's for an episode. Hey oh. Siri, set an alarm for 20 minutes. Okay. Oogie. Uh, I like the nose. It's a good nose. Yeah. There is, uh, it's not super sweet. There's like a nice rich body in that thing. I haven't tasted it yet, but it smells good. Mm -hmm. mm. I actually really like that. No yeah, it's, it's mild, sweet, yeah. easy drinker. Probably really good on the rocks. It's not sugary sweet though. No, no, it's not overly candied and it doesn't taste flavored. Yeah, mm. it's like... Um, it's kind of nice. Uh, it is on... Is that fruity? <laughs> maybe like a... Kind it's of a on floor. par with that one, I think. I like it better. Uh, I, this is a little bit more sugary sweet. Yeah. Um, the noble oak sees a little bit more of like the natural mm -hmm. sweetness going into it. I don't know if we gave him any notes on that though. No, I mean tan, a little bit tanniny, a little bit wood note. Yeah. The sherry cast doesn't actually present a sherry. Oh. I, um, yeah, yeah. I, I spaced on that. You said they yeah. put some staves in there. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't really get any kind of sherry. No, me either. You would expect like a dark, rich, like a fruitiness or something. I got a little bit of more of a wood accent, but I didn't get really a sherry there, accent. There, there is a natural sweetness, but I wouldn't say it goes so far as to be able to call it a fruity mm -mm. sweetness. It's close. Yeah. It's more candy than fruit. Uh, but not quite. I would say this is candy. It's not sugary. It's not floral. No, but like it's a dessert. Whiskey. It's like a whiskey sweetness. A fruit dessert. You no, know, I'm saying it's a whiskey sweetness. A whiskey, <laughs> whiskey sweetness with a nice oakiness. It's got that whiskey sweetness. Yeah, that, you know, you know, whiskeys have. It's quite popular in the cabin. Oh though. yeah, common people. Even. People like the whiskey sweetness. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is that it? Yeah. Let's do one more. Okay. I can do that. This is a gift from James Owen, a magnificent bastard. James Owen, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> So, um, black, black, back. black back from Silverback Distillery. Okay. Oh, it's another one of those can't get to the piece that helps you open it. I should bring my Paul Hogan. Bring your Paul Hogan. There we go. Is that it? No, that was the twist. There you go. Mm -hmm. We did it. All right. So. Not a ton about this. This is... Two years old, straight whiskey, and they just say, this might be the ultimate butterscotch bomb. Straight bourbon whiskey. It is the... Uh, yeah, I've had this... Slightly pine. I've had this a hundred times before. Man, this is like... This is craft, dead middle craft bourbon. I say, for me, it's not dead middle craft. For me, it's, it's elements of craft, it's gleamings of craft, but it's pulling towards, it's wanting to be rubbing shoulders with the uh, more entry-level bourbons yeah. that people are often using on the rocks or to mix with coke. A lot of vanilla, a lot of brown sugar. Yeah. 
This is three Birthday. years old, batch 23, bottle 60. And the nose isn't bad. It's just mm -mm. very, very familiar. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's totally different. What does that taste? Oh, that, that, that kind of a woody character? Yeah, <coughs> yeah it did this. <coughs> Bloom, vanish, finish. Like, <clears throat> the middle dropped it out. It leaves me with <clears throat> the the antique wood. The antique yeah. store, antique store dusty. But furniture. the middle palette is just like someone cut a hole out of the donut. It's it's like there's something, then nothing, and then finish. That's bizarre. Hmm. All right, if I spread it around a little bit, the beginning bit sort of trails in and then connects to the finish. You start to find a little there's bit. There's no mid palette. I start to find a little bit of a cherry, three fourths of the way, <clears throat> and then. I think that the the woody notes, mm -hmm. the way that the oak presents, I think is probably the most unique thing about this. Yeah, it's it, we've had it before, but mm -hmm. it's the antique store mm -hmm. wood, um, just old furniture and whatnot. And then you got some classic bourbon notes that you will often find in uh, you know the bourbons that are uh, the proofed low, and people are often grabbing to either put on the rocks or to mix with coke there. Ah, uh, no, you know what? Of all these, I'm going back to the Virgin. It's 43%. The Metal End Distilling Company, the Kentucky sourced. That's what I'm going back to. I like so, it best. Nope, other one. No, I'm not reaching. I'm reaching for. Oh, me. you're reaching for Centerfire. Centerfire. You're was, going back to like the funky adventure. I was saying, I like the funky adventure. Uh, almost knocked your hat off. <laughs> the Vir you wanted the Virgin. Mm -hmm. I think in order, I liked <clears throat> Centerfire, then Noble Oak. Then Virgin, then, then that Blackback, one. yeah. I would put it like this. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. We're on very different pages with the center fire there. Yeah. It's it's just so weird, though. Here's the fight of stealing and drinking. If you fight me, a fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver side. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us.